In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept in quantum mechanics known as the plane wave. Now, before we define what a plane wave is, we must understand what a free particle is. So, in quantum mechanics, we define a free particle as a particle that does not actually feel any outside force. And because it doesn't feel any force, the potential energy of our free particle does not actually change. And so, we can arbitrarily choose the potential energy of a free particle to equal to zero. So, let's suppose we have a free particle, let's suppose an electron that is moving along the x-axis in the positive direction. So the potential energy of the electron is arbitrarily chosen to be zero. Now, how exactly do we describe the motion of this electron as it moves along the x-axis at any fixed instant in time? So we can describe it using the time-independent Schrodinger equation that is given by this formula. So the product of the potential energy of our free particle and the wave function that describes the free particle minus this constant multiplied by the second derivative of our wave function with respect to our x position is equal to the total energy E of our free particle multiplied by the wave function. So, once again, recall that this time-independent Schrodinger equation uses the wave function given by psi with respect to x, and the wave function actually describes the motion and behavior of our free particle, our electron. So basically, we can use this equation to solve for the wave function. Now, because we're dealing with a free particle and we arbitrarily chose the potential energy of our particle, the electron, to be zero, this quantity is zero. And if this quantity is zero, this entire quantity is also zero. So we have negative this is equal to this. Now, if we multiply both sides by 2m and we divide both sides by h bar squared and bring this term to the right side of our equation and set it equal to zero, we get equation A. So the second derivative of the wave function with respect to x plus this constant multiplied by the wave function is equal to zero. Now, Notice what this equation actually looks like. So recall the equation of motion for simple harmonic oscillators in classical mechanics. It looks something like this. And this is actually very similar to equation A. In fact, by analogy to equation of motion of simple harmonic oscillators, we can readily show that the solution to equation A looks something like this, which is similar to the solution for this equation in classical mechanics. Let's call our solution uh, equation B. So basically, if we replace these two quantities with this equation, these two sums will equal equal to zero. That's exactly what we mean by solution to equation A. Now, what exactly is this K term? Notice in the equation of motion for simple harmonic oscillators, the K is the spring stiffness constant. But the K in this equation is not the spring stiffness constant. The, uh, the question is, what exactly is our K? So from the conservation of energy, we see that the total energy of our free particle, the electron, E, is equal to the sum of the potential energy and our kinetic energy. Now, the non-relativistic kinetic energy equation is one-half mv squared. Now, because our momentum is equal to mass times velocity, and from this equation we see that the velocity is equal to the momentum divided by the mass, we can replace this velocity with p divided by m, and we get this result. So e is equal to u plus p squared divided by 2m. But because we're dealing with a free particle, our u is simply equal to zero. So e is equal to p squared divided by 2m.
Now recall that the momentum is also related to our k by the following equation. So the momentum of our free particle is equal to the product of k and h bar. So this equation was discussed in the lecture on the time independent Schrodinger equation. So if you're not certain whether where this equation comes from, go back and watch that lecture. So basically, if we take this p and replace the p with this product, we get the following result. So e is equal to h bar squared multiplied by k squared divided by 2 multiplied by m. Now if we solve for k, Using this equation, we see that k is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by m multiplied by e divided by h bar squared. So this is what our k is. Once again, the k is not the spring stiffness constant that we spoke about in the equation of motion for simple harmonic oscillators in classical mechanics. So, what exactly can we actually conclude from this, from this discussion? What exactly is the plane wave? Well, if we have a free particle that is moving along the x-axis, along one dimension, with the momentum given by p and a total energy given by e, we can represent that motion of that free particle by using a sinusoidal wave. And this sinusoidal wave is known as the plane wave. So once again, if we look at the following equation and if we examine our solution to equation A given by equation B, we see that the motion of our particle is sinusoidal and this is known as the plane wave. In fact, if we look at equation B and we take our constant B and set it equal to zero, then the solution to this equation A simply becomes as follows. So by the way, A and B are simply some complex constants. So if we set B equal to zero, then the solution our wave function with respect to x is equal to a multiplied by sine of k multiplied by x where k is this quantity. Now if we take this and we plot it on the xy axis where the x axis is our position given by x and the y axis is our wave function given by psi with respect to x, we get the following sinusoidal wave where a is simply simply the magnitude, the amplitude of our wave. So this is known as a plane wave. So once again, basically, a plane wave is produced by a free particle that is moving with a momentum m and an uh, p and an energy e. Now, notice because we're dealing in uh, because we're dealing with quantum mechanics and because we know precisely what the momentum p is by the uncertainty principle if we know what the momentum p is precisely at any given moment in time we can't actually determine where our particle is because the uncertainty in our position is infinitely large so once again notice that that p, our momentum, is precisely given, so the change in p is zero. Therefore, there is no way of knowing the position of our free particle because the delta x, the uncertainty in x from the uncertainty principle, is infinitely large. So that means if we know what the momentum is of our particle, we actually have no way of telling where our particle is found along the x-axis. It could be found anywhere along the x-axis. Our change in x, our uncertainty in x, is infinitely large. Now, in the next lecture, we're actually going to look at a specific example that deals with the plane wave.